Number 10, Terry Watanabe. The American-born businessman whose father founded the plastic trinket business Oriental Trading Company reportedly gambled and wasted away $205 million in just one year. His gambling spree took place at two Harris casinos on the Las Vegas Strip, the Caesars Palace and the Rio. His gambling craze would attract tourists near and far to watch him. He often played multiple high-priced hands of blackjack at $50,000 per hand, but he would lose regularly, even losing $5 million in just one day, $50 million in six months, and $100 million a month later. Harris Entertainment Inc. reported that 6% of its gambling revenue that year came solely from Watanabe racking up a total of $204 million. Watanabe managed to pay back Harris approximately $110 million. However, he refused to pay the rest, insisting that the casino took advantage of him while he was intoxicated, a clear violation of state law. Number 9. Zhen Li Ye Gong during 2004 and 2007, this Chinese-Mexican businessman had reportedly blew away $85 million at the Venetian in Las Vegas and $40 million at several other major casinos. He even went on to waste several other millions in credit that casinos lent him, but that was eventually written off as bad debt and never added to his total amount lost. His losses were so large that it even affected the bonuses of Las Vegas Sands and Venetian executives. Although he lost a lot, he was still rich. He made a report $350 million over the course of three years as the CEO of United Farm Chem. But he was drug lord and was also channeling huge amounts of his methamphetamine imports to the Sinaloa cartel in Mexico. It wasn't before long though, Mexican drug agents and the American DEA officials caught up with him, searching his Mexico City home in 2007, where they made the largest drug cast seizure of all time. They found $210 million hidden in the floors of his mansion, all in US $100 bills. Gone was later found guilty in August 2014 for organized crime, synthetic drug production, and activities involving the use of illegal funds. Number 8. Omar Siddiqui this highly successful vice president of a popular electronics company had a little far less success at gambling and actually winning. He reportedly blew away $65 million betting recklessly. Just like a headless chicken, betting as much as $200,000 per hand at blackjack, wasting approximately $160 million over a three-year period at the MGM Grand Casino and Sands Casino in Las Vegas. His gambling addiction produced great losses in the millions, with a massive $8 million lost in a single day. For casinos, Sidiqui was the jackpot for profits. Everyone wanted him in their establishment and loaned him millions on the strength of his executive status. Swimming in the Red Sea of debt, Sidiqui came up with a brilliant plan to defraud his employer, Fry's Electronics, out of $85 million to pay his Vegas gambling debts alone. But his plan failed. He stood trial in 2008 and accepted a deal, ultimately being sentenced in 2011 to six years in prison on fraud charges. Unable to pay his casino debts, he also owed the IRS $22 million in taxes. Number 7. Kerry Packer While most famous gamblers accumulate their wealth on the tables and through roulette wheels, Kerry Packer was an exception to the norm. Packer built a media empire during his lifetime and became known as Australia's richest man and wildest gambler. Due to his high-stakes gambling ventures in blackjack, poker, and baccarat, he managed to lose $42 million in less than a year between September 1999 and August 2000, including losing more than $20 million during a three-day baccarat tournament during the weekend in Las Vegas. For Packer, being famous in Australia wasn't enough. He went on to rack up one of the largest gambling losses in British history, after burning through $17 million in three weeks, during a gambling session on blackjack at the Crockford's Casino in London. Packer was a dangerous gambler and casinos feared him. On one occasion, he reportedly forced the London's Espinals Club to shut down after winning so much money in blackjack. Jack. Another time, amazingly, it was said that Packer almost broke the MGM Grand, which resulted in the dismissal of several prominent employees who allowed him to make huge bets. Number 6. Archie Karras Archie will go down in history as one of the most famous gamblers and poker players ever. Why? This gambling guru has the longest documented winning streak in gambling history from 1992 to 1995, using literally only $50 and turning it into a fortune of $40 million. But this wasn't enough, and rather, to quit while he was ahead, he wanted more. You bet. He kept gambling and went on to lose all of the money playing craps and baccarat. 
But this story gets even more interesting. In September 2013, he was arrested in Las Vegas after being accused of marking cards and using hollowed out chips to mark J, Q, K, and A at a blackjack table at a San Diego casino. Although faced with three years in prison for charges of burglary and winning by fraudulent means, the judge was very lenient and sentenced him to three years probation. Since he had pleaded guilty to one count of felony burglary, it's very clear now that the hollowed out chips may have just revealed his real poker playing skills. Number 5. Harry Kakavas This successful Australian real estate sales rep had approximately spent $1.5 billion at the Melbourne Crown Casino in just a little over a year, mainly on most high rollers favourite game, Baccarat. During one gambling session in May 2006, he reportedly spent over $160 million in less than 6 hours, and was placed behind bars after he was caught stealing around $300,000 to keep up his habit. What was even more surprising than his actual losses was that he sued the casino in 2013 with the aim to recover and clear some of his debts, claiming they exploited his gambling addiction and even enticed him to gamble more by giving him VIP access to the casino's private jet. Well, you don't need to be a genius to have guessed that he lost the case. Chief Justice Robert French of the High Court ruled, The casino did not take advantage of Kakavas. He was a successful businessman entirely capable of making decisions on his own, and as such, he is entirely responsible for all his excessive gambling actions. Number 4. Maureen O'Connor as the only female gambler on our countdown list, former mayor of San Diego and widow of the founder of fast food chain Jack in the Box, Robert Peterson, O'Connor reportedly gambled away $1 billion on video poker games throughout the 2000s alone. After satisfying her gambling needs, she ended up in the red by $13 million. With nowhere to run, she decided to commit fraud and steal $2 million from the charity set up by her late husband just to offset her gambling losses. But that wasn't enough. She sold her jewelry and other high-end items just to fund her gambling addiction. However, thanks to her, the Charity Foundation ultimately folded in 2009 due to her misuse of the funds. Smacked in the face with 10 years behind bars after her first trial in 2013, the court agreed to defer prosecution for two years and to drop all charges if she made restitution, received medical attention for a gambling addiction, and just stopped gambling altogether. Her lawyer Eugene Iredale and her defense claimed that a brain tumor had influenced her poor judgment and gambling addictions. Do you agree? Number 3. Akio Kashiwagi Making easily over $100 million per year from his real estate and investment business, Kashiwagi gambled money away just as quickly as he earned it. During a gambling session in 1990 at the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City, he reportedly made a deal for a whopping $12 million which he won. But after just losing $10 million, he reportedly left the casino with a mere $2 million and claimed that the casino hadn't held up their end of the deal. As a professional Baccarat player, Kashiwagi enjoyed playing high-stake games. He played Baccarat for between $100,000 and $200,000 a hand, with playing sessions lasting more than 70 hours. In January 1992, he was brutally stabbed 150 times with a samurai sword. His body was found in his home in Japan on Mount Fuji. But, unfortunately, the murder case still remains a mystery to this day. He died owing casinos at least $9 million. Number 2. Jimmy White This famous snooker player admitted to losing more than $3 million gambling on his favorite games, horse racing and blackjack. Known for his fast and lavish living, he was also a drug addict for three months during a part of his career, spending over $400,000 on drugs. His crack cocaine addiction and severe alcohol abuse impacted his professional life greatly. Even in his autobiography Second Wind, he said cocaine is a mental drug, unlike heroin. Your body does not need it, it is only your mind telling you to have it. After losing the World Championship Finals in 1994, he admitted to spending his $200,000 runner up prize in just one day. He had admitted to being a compulsive gambler, betting on dogs horses, cards, and casino roulette wheels all his life. He would even play more exhibitions just to cover his gambling debts, only to be stuck in the middle of nowhere, still broke and drunk. Number 1. Robert Maxwell Robert Maxwell is thought to have made one of history's fastest gambling losses ever recorded. Can you believe it? This former media tycoon blew away more than $2 million in just less than 3 minutes. 
playing three different roulette wheels at Les Ambassadors Casino in London. To make matters even worse, he was broke. His publishing company had gone bankrupt several years prior because he was unable to repay his debts and the bank seized all his assets. But not only Maxwell was a lover of luxury, he also adored and loved money, which was likely why he loved gambling so much. He once had several millions in his bank account due to many fraudulent activities, his biggest at the time being pension fraud. Unfortunately, shortly after convicted of fraud, he died on November the 5th, 1991 owing, of course, billions in pension fraud cases. This goes to show that clearly all the money he was gambling wasn't even his. 